This is Kyle Hyman, and joining us this morning to talk about uh, church investigations and what's going on in the church right now and what we can expect in the future. Dr. Matthew Bunsen, thank you for being here. Dr. Bunsen? Good morning. It's uh, always good to be with you. I, as uh, I have said on a number of occasions, I wish it were under slightly happier circumstances. <laughs> right. You've been really busy kind of following all this news and reporting on it. Uh, are you getting any sleep? Uh, yes. Well, I've, I've tried to embrace uh, Pope John the Twenty Third's uh, model, and where around midnight he would say, "Oh Lord, this is your church. I'm leaving it in your hands until <laughs> yes. I wake up in the morning." Uh, yeah. I think that's a good place for all of us to be, and not not just from midnight till dawn. Well, there's so much going on in the church, and I know a lot of us are trying to figure out what happens next. What is the the procedure? in the church for investigating some of these claims. There's some things that we, we know are true. There's some of it we're pretty sure is true and some that we're, we're just kind of waiting to find out. And, and we know that there needs to be an investigation into different allegations that have been made. Maybe we can talk about the, the first one that came up was former Cardinal McCarrick and the allegations against him. And what would be the process for investigating these claims? I know Cardinal DiNardo has promised an investigation into Archbishop McCarrick, said he had to meet with Pope Francis to discuss it. Can you explain why that is and what the rules are in place to investigate into bishops? Sure. Well, if we go back to uh, June 20th when the formal announcement was made regarding the very serious and what were credible and substantiated, to use the technical term, allegations against Cardinal McCarrick, it required any such investigation be started and conducted with the full approval of the Holy See. That is in part because he's a bishop, but it's even more complicated because he was, at the time anyway, a member of the College of Cardinals. Mm -hmm. So only the Holy Father can initiate that type of an investigation, and only only he can give the approval for it, which is why Cardinal Pietro Parolin, the Vatican Secretary of State, uh, delegated or approved uh, Cardinal Timothy Dolan of New York to sort of oversee that initial investigation. That took some time. Now, what is apparently the desire of uh, certainly the U.S. Catholic leadership of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, the members of the College of Cardinals here, is that now an investigation has to go forward uh, that would look at the details of the McCarrick scandal and ask those very hard questions that, in fact, remain still from June 20th. And, and in a nutshell, what comes down to how is it possible for Theodore McCarrick to rise to the highest levels of the American hierarchy, to become the Archbishop of Washington, despite all of the problems he had before, all of the accusations, mm-hmm. become a member of the College of Cardinals, retain his power, and only when he was 88 years old did these revelations actually come into the light. There were a lot of questions related to that and a lot of very hard questions. And in the end, only the Holy See can provide the kinds of answers uh, that we need to have through a formal investigation, what's known as an apostolic visitation. That word, the apostolic visitation, can you explain what that is? Yeah, it, basically what it means is a formal Vatican investigation. Now, if we're looking for a model for that, we would turn toward the recent events in Chile, Mm -hmm. where Pope Francis, after some initial missteps that he himself publicly acknowledged, and what he described as uh, errors in judgment and perception about the situation, authorized uh, a formal Vatican investigation in the form of uh, two representatives, one of them uh, by the name of Archbishop Charles Shakluna, who for those who may not be familiar with his name, is actually an archbishop from Malta who worked for many years uh, under Joseph Ratzinger, uh, who is then Cardinal Prefect of the Congregation of the Doctrine of Faith, and then uh, Pope Benedict XVI, in leading the charge in investigating clergy sex abuse. And he was sent to Chile and created uh, what was a 1,300-plus page report on everything that he could find there. The result was that the bishops of Chile were summoned to Rome by Pope Francis, and that itself led to the mass resignations of the bishops of Chile. Right. Uh, so far, Pope Francis has accepted five of them. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not suggesting that any investigation that the Arma Carrick is going to end with the mass resignations of the U.S.'s bishops. What I am saying is that this type of an, an investigation by the Holy See needs to have very broad authority. 
And Cardinal Daniel DiNardo, the head of the conference, as you note, uh, is trying to get to Rome to meet with Pope Francis to request this for the U.S. Church, because I think this is the most bare minimum expectation that almost every Catholic that I talk to wants and feels is needed at this point. How long might that take to even get started, much less to unfold and really be able to explore the full investigation? Well, that's the problem. So far, the, the Holy See has uh, declined to comment. Of course, mm-hmm. Pope Francis has very famously said that the, he will not say, as he put it, I will not say a word. on um, Certainly the allegations made against him by Archbishop Carlo Vigano, the former nuncio of the United States, should Cardinal DiNardo succeed in requesting an apostolic visitation, uh, it could begin fairly quickly with the arrival of uh, what would be the, the apostolic visitator or the, the representative of the Holy See. Now, it's going to require the cooperation of the nunciature here in the United States. It will require the full cooperation of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, the Vatican Secretary of State, the Congregation for Bishops, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, just to name a few, as well as all of the dioceses where Theodore McCarrick had served previously. So that would include New York, Metuchen, Newark, and Washington, D.C. So you can imagine the scale of an investigation like this. Yeah. And it could take weeks, if not months, to be completed at a time when, unfortunately, Catholics have increasingly little patience for what they see as potential stonewalling or or just the pace of it. We're talking with Dr. Matthew Bunsen about some of the church investigations that we can hope for or maybe expect to to see in the future. What what do you think the hopefulness is that this will play out soon? (laughs) Uh, Again, based on what we we see so far, I think uh, we need to prepare for a lengthy period of time before we start getting very clear answers. I say that not to discourage anybody, but because investigations like this, even under the best of circumstances, can take some time. One of the things that uh, adds to the the complexity, but also the, the frustration level for people, is how public all of this has been. Now, whatever one thinks of the allegations and the accusations of Archbishop Vigano, he has helped, I think, in at least one way of redrawing attention back to the scandal surrounding now Archbishop, former Cardinal Theodore McCarrick. Mm -hmm. Now, there's always the risk of being drawn into these sort of uh, bitter divides. Anyone who spends much time on Twitter in the Catholic world right now is either horrified or enraged by uh, much of the discussion going back and forth. Or both. (laughs) Or both. Uh, So there's the risk of a lot of distractions emerging between now and the start of a formal investigation. For Catholics who ask me what they can do, I always start with the same thing as you know, you and I have talked about this. First, start by trying to be holier yourself. Mm -hmm. It starts with uh, making sure that you're availing yourself of the sacraments, you're going to Mass, you're going to confession, that in this very difficult time, you need to be praying, all of us need to be praying a lot more. And we need to Uh, answer some of those hard questions that family members and friends are asking. Why are we staying in the church? Why are we still Catholic? And pray for our priests especially. But also encourage our bishops, our cardinals, and the Vatican itself to make sure that a formal investigation really does take place because there are a lot of questions that we have to have answered, but we, we need to do so very respectfully. Will the investigations be done by people in the church hierarchy, or will this be done by lay people or a combination of the two? Yeah, you're asking uh, one of those great questions that uh, has emerged in light of uh, the McCarrick scandal. At this point, I don't think that there is uh, a credible way for the Bishops' Conference, for the U.S. Bishops, and for the Vatican to conduct an investigation into the events, I'll try to put it as politely as possible, surrounding Cardinal McCarrick without having a very active lay presence. Cardinal Donardo himself has made that point uh, in a number of his statements of late, including his most recent one. And the National Review Board, which is uh, is created in, in the wake of the sex abuse scandal in 2002, has also issued a statement to the effect that, no, we have to have a hand in this. We have to have a role. Lay people need to participate in this. Where the bishops, if they think, I'm not criticizing the bishops, but if, if there is this movement toward this idea that the bishops can investigate themselves, it will, for a lot of people, 
both Catholic and non-Catholic, be something of a non-starter. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it simply won't have the, the credibility. Uh, and everyone will, will start that investigation with a very cynical eye, and I don't think anyone wants that at this point. And then when the report is complete, what happens? Is that then passed off back to the Pope, or, or what happens with that report? Yeah, the, the report itself, uh, much as we saw with Chile and elsewhere, would be presented to the Holy See. It would, it would go directly to the Pope, mm-hmm. uh, who then would make whatever decisions he needs. Now, again, because there are so many accusations being made from different quarters, especially by Archbishop Vigano in his letter of Vatican officials, all of this has to be handled very carefully and very prudently. And the USCCB, I think, is going to have to have a say in this, and I'm hoping that we can have some traction before the bishops' meeting in November. I think the level of frustration will be very, very high if events have transpired between now and the bishops' meeting without any real progress. So, again, only the Holy See can deal with this issue, which I think is why a lot of people are, are concerned by the absence of a statement. Now, there are stories circulating from Rome just this last weekend that there may, in fact, be some kind of a statement from the Vatican regarding at least the allegations of Archbishop Vigano, but that would still beg the question, how are you going to handle what this is really all about? And we can't be distracted from the surrounding scandal of Theodore McCarrick. Those are the questions that need to be asked. And in light, certainly, of the horrendous Pennsylvania grand jury, and at, also at the very bottom of this, we cannot forget the suffering, the immense suffering of the victims in all of this. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Again, you can follow EWTN, National Catholic Register. They've been doing a great job of covering this, and I'm sure they'll keep us informed in the future. Thank you so much, Dr. Bunsen, for joining us today and sharing this with us. Good to be with you, and let's keep praying. Yes, definitely. Definitely.